I felt literally like a dog in a cage. <laughs> gang welcome back to my channel if you're a new viewer what's good make sure you hit that subscribe button and be a part of nest gang because nest gang is the littlest gang of all gangs um first of all i just want to say that i apologize for making you guys wait so long for this next video but i really wanted the last story time to get to 10k so i knew that everybody was caught up 10k likes is nothing you feel me and it's been about two and a half weeks so let's try to do better this post i'm gonna make it 10k again let's get this to 10k so i can post the next video just letting you guys know in the beginning you feel me i will tell these story times all the way into the end there's been some people that's been asking can you do like regular videos like you did before yes i will and i am going to be doing it i just been focused on my team vz channel and page and all of that stuff i'm going to be getting ready as always but this time i'm going to be using the things that i got from boxy charm shout out to boxy charm for sending me this they send me a box every month with full size makeup products they're different every month you guys could subscribe to them for $21 a month and they send you over a hundred dollars worth of makeup which is cool because you know you get to try things that you never would have tried and most of the time you're amazed because you're like I would have never bought this because it's $45 but this does the job more than anything else so yeah that's that but let's get into the video Okay, so where were we? I told y'all about the first house, which is my best friend. The second house was Lupe. The third house was Ashley. The fourth house was Ipsy, which was a crazy situation. And the fifth place is the dorm with James. So to prep my skin, I use this Tarte's Ready Set Radiant Skin Mist. They say it's good for like when you wanna go natural and let me tell you, it is great for that because I be waking up and I do not be feeling like doing my makeup, especially when you live in a place like Texas and it's super hot. Oh my god, there's like four flies and like they just keep coming in from the window. There's like a crack in the window somewhere which I can't figure it out. But anyway, I told you guys how I was supposed to move in with my sister in Chicago and try to start a life there. But then James convinced me that moving with him to college because he went to college. But the thing was, he didn't have his own place. Like he actually stood on campus. This dude stood in a dorm. So I stood with him. I stood with him and a small bedroom for months it was not easy so remember i told y'all that i was like out of love with james and i guess me moving back unofficially made us be together again because i'm living with him for months so for my eyebrows i'm gonna use chella's eyebrow cream thingy so one side is a brush and then the other side is the actual cream it's perfect for on the go but anyways back to the story so remember i told you that james said the agreement would be i would try again with him and live in the dorm room and then at the end of the summer if things are not what he thought it would be if things were down south and bad then i would just pack my stuff and then move to chicago right so my plan was to just go there and just like tough out the two months and at the end of the summer be like you see it's not working like let me go because at that point like you can't keep crying and trying to be suicidal you feel me so every day i'm just taking the days by day so i moved there and it's completely different it's a different scenery like i was so bored because i didn't know anybody there it was two hours away from home i just felt so miserable because i'm like i'm not even on the same level of this dude i don't know anybody i don't have any friends all these people are kind of older than me and nobody's supposed to know that i live here because james was an ra so he was basically living for free all he had to do was like some work or whatever so if anybody found out that i was living there he would have lost his job and probably would have got kicked out i forget what would have happened but it wouldn't have been good so i have to like stay in this room locked up can't even go out that much because somebody will get suspicious can you just imagine how depressing that is i felt literally like a dog in a cage like he still had to do stuff so he would leave and and I would just sit there mind you I've never had friends like that so I didn't have anybody to talk to except for 
Tori and my sister. I was mad and irritated all the time. So after I think a month went by, which is a really long time, especially when you have nothing to do, nobody to talk to, and you're always in a room and you're arguing with James all the time because you guys argue about the smallest things and every relationship you're gonna argue with. Me and James was like on a whole nother level because he was so petty. He never wanted to stop arguing. He wanted to keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And it would last all day. Like I'll be trying to get to the point and this dude just don't get it. He just wants to keep going. So after a month went by, I was like, look, I cannot live like this. In my head, I had to talk to myself. I was like, Vanessa, you cannot be living like this. Like you already have in your mind that you're leaving. So you're making yourself more miserable because you're not trying to like enjoy it. Cause I feel like you can make a relationship work if you want it. You have to really want it. I did not want it at all. But at one point I was like, you're gonna waste months of your life just sitting here unhappy so i told myself i was like just try just try to like james again try to love him again after that day i came to my senses and i started to give him a chance again like eventually me and james was like mad cool almost to the point where we used to be in the beginning of the relationship but eventually it's just it just still wasn't enough like i was locked in this room day and night could not leave couldn't do anything i was just kind of settling and grateful because I was just thinking yeah I'm living in this dorm I'm locked in this room but it could be worse I could not have a roof over my head I could be in a shelter at least he cares about me enough to take me in and risk his situation you feel me so yeah since I was locked in this room it was hard for me to eat because you know he had his own school schedule or whatever he had to be here at this time there at that time be up early in the morning mind you I've always slept to like 12 1 o'clock I don't know if it's just me but when I wake up I'd be starving especially if I didn't eat the night before or something and you know when you first wake up you have to use the bathroom i was too scared to go because where his dorm was at it was like a all boys hallway and then you had to walk all the way down to the end and then there was an all girls hallway so i had to walk all the way down there and i didn't want anybody to see me you know so it was just a hard living situation and if i was hungry i would have to text him or wait for him to come all the way back to that side of the campus to steal some food because you're technically not supposed to bring food out the cafeteria like he'll get a sandwich and then wrap it in some napkins and stuff and then bring it to the dorm and stuff and that was literally all i was living off of because i'm like a super picky eater especially back then and their food was not that good. I just fucked with the sandwiches. But eventually, them sandwiches got so disgusting. And I was just so irritated because he didn't have money. He, he had, like, a study hall. I think he was making a little bit. But it definitely wasn't enough to, like, go out to eat. You feel me? At that point, I had less than $1,000 of the money that I collected. I've been thinking about a job at this point. I was actually looking around. But I kept getting held back because I'm like, okay, so if I get a job, how am I supposed to get in and out of the place? like people are gonna definitely see me coming in and out and if I get out of work at a certain time and you're still in class or you know like it's gonna clash so after not being able to eat whenever I wanted to because I didn't have enough money and I didn't want to hit rock bottom but I knew I was running out of money I just came to my senses and then I applied and got accepted to this job called Panda Express which I actually made a story time about it so if you guys didn't watch it go watch it because it's deep but I got a job there and then started making some decent money. And then when I started making decent money, I started paying for a lot of the things. And then eventually I started getting irritated because it's like, boy, you make money too. But I couldn't get too mad because he would always get stuff for like birthdays and holidays because him and his family were big on that stuff. And I wouldn't get him anything because I was like so broke. And honestly, I was kind of selfish because I knew that I only had a limited amount of money. I didn't have a job and I wasn't into James like that. So I never really got him anything. Thing, so whatever I feel like that's besides the point so I got a job I was tired of all that stuff while that was happening I was on Facebook one day and Damo Wilson posted something like hey like I need a new friend make yourself noticed in the comments so I just kept dropping look I'm gonna save that whole story time because that's like a whole story time which I don't, I don't know if I want to drop or not because it's whatever i don't know but long story short she messaged me and like we became real cool like we talked every day for a while and she had posted this app that she was live on called you now and so when i went to watch her like after she got off i was like hmm what is this app and after i was like looking into it, i was like oh this is pretty cool like you go live and like people watch you and talk to you and like you just do stupid stuff you have to make an account to even watch somebody at that point i don't know if it's the same now but i made an account and i just started going live and 
from watching people and like people enjoyed me and i was let me tell you i got so tuned into that app like i was on the app from waking up to going to sleep bro like it was crazy like whenever i could get on the app that's when I was on the app. I think I even tried to get on the app while I was at work. Like, I was just talking to people. They was making me laugh. It actually made me feel like I had a life because, you know, I had somebody to talk to. People complimenting me, telling me that I'm beautiful, making me feel special, you feel me? So, of course, I'm gonna get on there. And once I got the job, because, mind you, James was always doing something because, you know, he was like RA and then he had hella classes because I think he was trying to finish sooner or whatever the case was. He had a lot on his plate, so he he never really seen me and when I got the job he definitely hardly seen me and when he came back like we didn't really talk and when we did it was an argument so like I just started pushing him away again um and then things started like getting tense and whenever he did come back I would be on live and I never wanted to get off he'll start talking to me and I'll still be on live like I would ignore him like that was my escape especially because I knew he wasn't gonna talk stupid while a lot of people was watching me so I was definitely using you now as an escape from him as well so then while i'm on live i do fun stuff i'm like goofy and all that stuff and one day i'm like talking about what i want to do in my life i was like one day i want to be famous you know i feel like everybody when they were younger at least was like i want to be famous or even to this day like i want to be famous but you never really know what you're going to be famous for like what think about it what are you going to get famous for i really wanted to be known because i don't want to just die and then be like a local girl you feel me like i want a lot of people to know me my personality and stuff so on you now, I met this guy named, their at name was Boston. Boston would always make me laugh and stuff. Just say like out of pocket stuff. So one day Boston was like, what's your kick? That's when kick was popping. Oh, you know, that's a while ago. So I gave it to him. It wasn't like, I don't know, flirtatious shit. It was like, send me your kick for something like i gotta tell you something about i don't remember what it was but i sent it to him and then boston had a picture of like him like a guy with a snake on their hand or whatever so i was like oh that snake looks scary and he was like oh yeah thanks da -da 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 -da. like you know that'll come in handy later so like me and boston were like talking like almost every day just having fun conversation like talking about dumb stuff and then boston was like i heard your story about how you want to be famous and stuff and how you really want to make a youtube channel and i was like well i don't have money like that and i just started this job but i know everything's expensive i don't know where to start and basically boston was very encouraging like i'll get you a camera and i'm like whoa like you don't even know me like that but at the same time like okay so all my life, I've always hated gifts, but this time, I done been through so much stuff, and I really wanted a freaking camera and YouTube channel, so I was like, okay, what can we do? And then Boston was like, there's this website called QVC, where you just pay monthly, like, you could just drop $100 now, and then pay $100 every month until it's all the way paid off. So, long story short, that's what I did, I bought it, and Boston actually stole one for me. He's like, I'm gonna steal one for you, and I was like, hell no, nah. if you go to jail, I'm gonna have that on my mind, like. Like, I could do it myself and he was like I'm gonna get it anyways for backup or whatever and I was like do what you do but I'm buying it so I bought it and that's when I started making YouTube videos and I was on you now and then I just blew up on you now had hella views and likes and comments but I ended up getting off because there were a lot of people who are just starting you now that were getting like they're called tip jars so they were getting paid to go live and they just made their account and I've been reaching out to you now and they never gave me the tip jar so I got mad and I quit you now and then I told them to go to my instagram which at the time i only had a thousand followers and then that's when my instagram started popping i started posting on there boston basically he was telling me how he usually just come into people lives and bless them and then leaves and me being a cancer i was like no you don't have to do that you're cool people i don't want to feel like i'm using you type stuff so, so for a couple months now, me and Boston are cool friends. Let me put that story on pause and continue with my living situation though. So while I was living in the dorms, I was basically peer pressured to go to school, even though I know that that was not my life calling for some reason, I just knew that wasn't for me. I knew I hated school with a passion and I never had interest in it. Eventually he was like, just do it. 
because I still have a year or two of college so just go to like at least the community college for now so that you know you'll have a living space or make your time useful or something like that he's like I could help you with like the work or something if that's what you need help with so I was like okay so I started applying for that and I needed a couple papers or something that I didn't have that was really important so I couldn't even start at that time and it was important to get in at a certain time because James was about to finish college but it didn't work out because I didn't have a certain paper when that didn't work I was like okay I really like makeup it might not make enough money enough money that you or your family would like me to make but it's something so I applied for cosmetology school I was super duper excited I was trying to hold it off I was so young I was like me and my best friend promised that we was gonna do cosmetology together so my dumb ass was waiting for her but at that time I was like I'm just gonna apply but there was something wrong with that too like something happened so I ended up not going and and also, I ended up having court around that time because I got caught shoplifting, which I could do a story time on that too. So I had to go to court and stuff. And mind you, I was like broke, which is why I got my job. But I saved that for the other video. I'm just letting you guys know what was going on around that time. I was irritated with James because he was so used to everything getting handed to him. He always said that he was born in the hood because he was like raised in the same neighborhood as me. But he really was like so more spoiled honestly he could get whatever he wanted with the right amount of whining and fussing a lot of the times like he never understood where i came from i guess so he didn't really understand the struggle that i was going through at that point i couldn't really say anything to him or his family because as much as i didn't like really mess with them my family wasn't there for me you feel me so i can give them that but most of it is because james fought for me everybody knew that he was attached to me and that i wasn't going anywhere so it felt like they tolerated me but anyways his family is big on the guy does all the hard work and the woman sits at home cooks cleans and everything make sure you're straight that's all the woman's there for that's what she has to do so like james was very dirty like let me tell you i am very lazy like i don't have ocd where i have to clean up every two seconds i'm not dirty but i'm not ocd you feel me so james was definitely not that he was very dirty and there's this disorder that james has that drove me in insane but i'm not gonna tell you guys just out of like respect and privacy but his disorder drove me crazy and it made the dirtiness 10 times worse just imagine living in a small cramped up dorm room with a mini fridge a microwave a futon two beds and a desk and stuff for two people on top of it being so messy because james is so dirty we would always get into little arguments because he would not want to clean up he's like you need to clean up you're the girl you're supposed to clean and i'd be like no, it's your mess. You clean. With James' disorder, it was just like even more gross. Like some of the times, okay, I would clean up the room. But then eventually I got irritated. So this one time I cleaned up all my stuff and I put his stuff in a pile so that, you know, he knew just attack that little area. That's all you got to do. That's it. And he had the nerve to argue with me like, so you're not going to help me with mine? I just cleaned this whole thing. I cleaned up 90% and you're tripping about your little 10% in the corner this time. I did my stuff, our stuff, and you want me to do your stuff? You're tripping. You know, just little stuff like that. I would get so irritated because I'm like, dude, I believe that everything should be 50-50 for the most part unless stated otherwise. Basically, me and James just fell out all over again. Like, the smallest things would make us argue for so long. For example, I'm going to read it from my diary. We got into arguments about his dreams, like full-on arguments. This is how it went. I had a dream that you made a to-do list in case you got to stay back in Grand Rapids for a week. And tell me why for two days it had meet with the B word. I was heated. Tell me why I grabbed and picked you up by the neck and slapped the F out of you back and forth about four or five times. And your sister just looked at you like, that's none of my business. So that was his dream, right? The way he said it, it was like cocky. Like, and then I slapped the crap out of you and your sister didn't do anything about it. I was like, first of all, my sister would never do that and second of he cut me off and he was like man i knock her little butt out too y'all too lit 
before he could say little, I was like, don't underestimate short people. Mind you that you're not even that much taller. I don't remember the next couple of lines, but then he was like, you're making me mad. And I'm like, you? Nigga, I'm the one that should be upset. You getting all irritated at me because of your dream. He was like, why you mad? I said, why wouldn't I be? I went to see the B word, which I'm gonna name him Brandon. So I said, really, how wouldn't I be? I went to go see Brandon in a dream, which is fake. And then he's like, what the F? Why would you say his name? I said, oh my gosh, really? That's so petty. You still want to argue about that? Why would you even tell me about a dream like that and then argue with me about it? So like we would get into small petty arguments. What should only last like a couple minutes, maybe lasted five plus hours. Y'all, I'm not over exaggerating and would drag. And then, you know, if you guys get in a relationship, it's so draining. You get so tired. Y'all, if I'm itching, it's because my braids are so itchy, bro. I'm about to take these out like now. So yeah, so it would drain me and then like it pushed me away even more So I was even more on you now after I don't even know how many months after working and all that stuff We got into a big argument because this is how it went down mind you I'm already back at the I don't care about this nigga anymore phase I was on live one night. He came back home from Studying or whatever and he was like I'm trying to go to sleep and I'm like good for you And he's like come lay with me and I'm on live so I'm like I'm good But I'll go up later. He was like I I kind of need to go to sleep now and I can't sleep if you're not up there with me and I'm like I'm not trying to do it because remember the disorder I told y'all about I was not trying to deal with his disorder so I'm on the other bed because mind you there's two beds in there it's like bunk beds on top of each other so I'm on the bottom he's like come up here with me and I'm like no late later so eventually he got balls mind you remember the time that I told you that we wasn't together he was telling me how his friends were telling him you let her walk all over you you need to be more firm with her type stuff like getting all this stuff in his head like trying to influence him and he started to be that way he started to be aggressive like grabbing me when we got an argument i'm like what the heck like you never used to do this before and like raising his voice it was just like really aggressive and hands-on when we got into an argument so then he like slammed my computer shut which took me off live right there and he's like come on come come up here and i was like don't put your hands on me what are you doing i told you i'm about to be up there later like now i don't want to lay with you because you're doing the most like i said it's bunk bed so he was like pushing me up the steps to go on the bed like forcing me up there and i'm like move get out of my way like, let me go i'm not facing the stairs i'm like facing like the opposite way because i'm trying to like get off and he's like pushing me up like he's hurting me like pushing my chest up so i sit on top of the bed but i'm still like trying to move him so i can get off and like go to this girl named laura's dorm room because he went to school with her but we went to the same program upward bound program and stuff so that's how i knew her and she stood in some apartments next to the dorm so i was like i'm gonna go to laura's house like you doing way too much like let me go you just get out of my way he was like no go up there so eventually long story short he pushed me really hard and my hand flew up and the ceiling was like a rough ceiling and it scraped my hand so like my hand was bleeding and i was like oh this is the thing this is my excuse let me know if you guys can relate but sometimes like when you're over a relationship or a situation you're just waiting for that one thing to happen so you could blow up out of proportion because there's so many little things that led up to that point so i was like yeah i'm leaving like we're done like you're hella aggressive now i don't know what's gotten into you if you think i'm gonna stay here like this like you got me messed up type stuff so eventually Eventually, I ended up getting free and I left the room. And while me in the room going down the hallway, all I hear is a boom and a shatter. And I'm like, what the f freak i don't know what to do so i just ran and then i ran into this laundry room that was like right next to the hallway like in between the two hallways at the end of the hall i was scared and all i hear is screaming and crying all i hear is vanessa and i'm like hiding in between the washers like in this small little space so that he doesn't find me i'm like shaking at this point i just heard a big old crash and boom i don't know what's going on i do know that before i met him he would punch things when he was mad that's what i heard so i was like oh snap he just punched something probably broke his hand or whatever laura I didn't answer her phone because it was about one or two in the morning so i was like oh my gosh what am i gonna do i'm like freaking out and my phone's about to die so eventually i get out the room to try to go back to the other room to like get my charger or whatever and when i'm walking towards the room because his room is across from the bathroom i see a trail of blood and i see a trash bin in the door because you have to have a key to go in everything so there's a trash bin by the door keeping it open and then the room door is wide open and then there's glass all over the floor and stuff and like a trail of blood and 
between the bathroom and the bedroom. So I'm like, what the heck is going on? I go in the room and James is just sitting there with his hand like this. A piece of glass got stuck in his palm and in his wrist or something like that. It was like a big piece of glass. So when I left, he slammed the door and punched the door, but the door had a glass mirror behind it. I guess he didn't remember or whatever. I don't know. Kind of felt bad, but at the same time, I was like, Vanessa, don't do it because you're going to get stuck even longer, blah, blah, blah. So I was just like, um, I need you to call the hospital or I need you to go to the doctors because that's not good. Like it could have hit a vein or whatever. That's a lot of blood. He's like, no, I'm not going. No, F this. Because I know that if I go to the hospital, I'm going to go alone. Or if I go to the hospital, you won't be here anymore. And I'm like, bro, go to the hospital. Go to the hospital. He's like, no, no, no. Like he was being stubborn and stuff. So like I ended up staying there helping him. I don't remember if I stood there or not that night. I don't think I did because Laura didn't answer the phone. But I was done with him. I told him like it's over. So we were over the next day. I went to Laura's house for a couple weeks because I still had to go to court for a couple things. I had probation and stuff. So I was dealing with that on top of working and trying to figure out how to transfer. I ended up reaching out to my mom and she she told me to come back we don't talk all the time but when we did she was like maybe you should come back and be at the house i was like well what about the bed bug situation because you know i'm not messing with that and she was like no it's all gone we got rid of it we bombed the house blah 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 so i was more than happy to come back like yes okay i'll be straight i'll work really 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 hard and then i'll get my own place or whatever my thought press was at the time so she told me to come back the next day after the big old fight me and james he wanted to talk to me and basically we ended on good terms terms or whatever obviously his mom didn't like me and I was on her phone line or whatever and I knew she was gonna cut me off regardless so I was like freaking out like oh my god what's gonna happen and then Boston was like go ahead and tell him to cut it off now like I'm about to get you a phone because luckily for you I just got an upgrade so I can get another phone on the line for no charge or whatever the case was so I was like okay bet so Boston had got me that phone and like I was pretty much straight Laura made me feel uneasy because her roommate was irritated that I was there because they had me sleeping in the living room and she felt like she didn't have a living room and it was like she's not paying any bills even though I was leaving in two weeks or whatever but whatever so I ended up leaving and going with my mom and that is the next part to this story make sure make sure make sure you just hit the like button right now so we can try to get this video to 10k likes for the next video so we don't have to wait so long i love you guys so much thank you for all the feedback i'm so glad that i'm touching a lot of people's hearts y'all mean so much to me like, honestly and truthfully you guys really make my day i am gonna do a shout out because i haven't did shout outs in a long time and i know you guys been asking for it so today's shout out goes to xo becca thank you for showing so much love i love you so much Mwah. if you guys want to win a shout out for the next videos to come just make sure that you like this video comment nessa gang subscribe and make sure you go spam my last post on instagram with positive things i love you so much nessa gang i'll see you in my next video bye